Salam, hello and welcome. Today is a special day because I'm rebuilding an engine. I have taken this engine apart previously. You can, I'll post a link in the description for that video. Now, these are the engine parts that I will be putting together. The crankcase, head, cylinder head, clutch case, clutch piston, ignition coil, and the engine covers. These are the wrenches that I'll be using the most. Uh, 3 mm, 4 mm, and 5 mm hex. I'll also be using a torque wrench because there are some torque specs for the head and for the crankcase and other components. And this is very important. Look tight. And I got here a new set of gaskets for this engine, including crankcase, head gasket, uh, carburetor, exhaust gasket, which I will be using most of them except for the head. Um, for the head gasket. Now this one is paper gasket and it doesn't last for long and instead I'll be installing a copper gasket. Now I'm going to start with the crankcase because it's the bottom end. It is the first thing to start with. So here are the two halves of the crankcase and this is the crankshaft. Now pay attention when you put the crankshaft in the crankcase because it goes in one orientation only and as you can see the threaded part from the outside here goes to the flywheel side which is this half and the threaded part from the inside which is this one goes to the clutch um, to the clutch side which is the smaller part right and now the time for a fresh gasket and so here's the new gasket now before I put the new gasket um, in I'm going to give you guys a good tip and that is for the future it will help you a lot for the future now I just would like to highlight that before I start working or putting any parts together I cleaned all the mating surfaces whether on the crankcase um, on the head side or um, the mating surface with the other crankcase half and I did the same to the cylinder head so I cleaned all mating surfaces they are nice shiny and clean and if you want to do this do not use a wire metal wheel because this stuff is made from aluminium and aluminium is very soft metal uh, the wire metal meal wheel whether it's um, steel or even if it's copper it will definitely cause some damage now instead I use the paper wheel yes you can also use a plastic wheel and if you don't have a rotary tool at all what you can do is you can you can use a plastic card a card similar to your credit card or ATM card any card that's not working does not function um, say an old credit card or, or an old health insurance card you can use it to scrap the surface and clean any residue from the old gasket but I believe also prevention is better than cure and here's a good trick to avoid having your gasket sticking to the mating surface. Now I'm going to add a little bit of oil and this is a two-stroke oil. Whenever you are rebuilding the two-stroke engine always use oil to lubricate almost everything. So I'm going to lubricate the bearings. So that way when the engine starts uh, all the bearings are lubricated and I'm lubricating the mating surface so the gasket does not sit dry here and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other half So that way the gasket does not set on a dry surface and next time you need to rebuild your engine for any reason you can easily take this gasket off and it won't leave any residues. Now before you put in all the parts together make sure all the parts are clean if you are working 
with a plastic cleaning wheel or wire cleaning wheel, always ensure you clean the parts uh, after you're done cleaning. Now, for example, um, after I clean the cylinder head, uh, after I clean the cylinder head with a paper wheel, I sprayed brake clean all over the cylinder head and then I cleaned it thoroughly. Now, I could not use a brake clean with the, with the crankcase part because I have a rubber seal here. And brake cleans and rubber, they don't just get along, they are not friends. So instead, I cleaned it with WD-40 and I made sure that all the parts are, uh, are nice and clean. Something else important to do if you are using um, a cleaning wheel, use a mask and tape on your bearings. You don't want any debris going inside the bearings. Make sure they are sealed. Something else that I cleaned is the threads for the screws and I cleaned the screws themselves. They are nice and clean. And why is that? Because the, the Loctite does not work with uh, if there's any debris or oil inside. Loctite works best with a dry surface. So that way, the crankcase is put together and it's, I'm, I'm ready to bolt the screws in. The crankcase screws are 4 mm hex. So I'm going to use Loctite with these screws because I want to ensure that these screws does not come out under any circumstances. That was a little bit too much, but that's fine. Now I know for sure that these are the crankcase screws because I have put them in a bag and I tagged the bag and I wrote on it crankcase screws. Now I'll just snug the screw, I'll go to the next one, put in Loctite on the next one, and then I'll go in crisscross pattern. I'll keep going until the screw is seated in full, I'll snug it a little bit, and then I'll continue installing the other screws. Third screw on the list. Here comes the last screw on the list. Now pay attention because these screws, they have torque specs. Uh, it might not be mentioned in your manual, uh, if there's a manual coming with the engine, because I haven't found it in, in mine. The torque spec for the crankcase screws is around 65 kilogram per centimeter. And that's what I'm going to do. So here I got my torque wrench. First, I'm going to talk them at 45, and then I'll go to 65. I'm going to lock it. Now, this, the torque wrench has a square bit, and the, the hex bits that I'm using, they have a um, hex shape bit, so I needed um, some kind of adapter in between. Now, the best adapter I could find is a quarter inch nut socket. Now, here we go with screw one. And always remember to go in crisscross pattern. And now let's up the game a little bit. I'll go all the way up to 65. Right, now that the crankcase is put together, it's ready to receive the clutch case. I can start installing the piston and all now, but the clutch case is going to help having the crankcase setting in a better orientation. So I'm going to install the clutch case now. All right, now the clutch case goes on the crankcase with no gaskets at all whatsoever. I'm using Loctite for the clutch case screws, all of them. Now, I could not find any torque specs for the, for the clutch case screws, 
Um, but they are 4 mm, similar as the crankcase screws, except that they are a little bit shorter. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to torque them on 45 kilograms per centimeter instead of 65. And three. Last one. Now, because I'm not, um, it's, it's not scientific and I just came up with the number, what I'm going to do is I'm going to feel the torque with my hand. I used to build these engines with my hand. There was no torque fix uh, back in the days. And I know how it feels. And they feel a little bit like they, they need to be uh, tightened a little bit. It's, it's good torque, that's for sure. Yeah, it is good torque. I can live with that. And now I'm going to install the piston on the crank. And first I'm going to place the needle bearing for the piston in its location. But before doing that, I'll give it a little bit of two-stroke oil. Lubrication is very important. Believe me, guys, these engines, they love to be lubricated. They just love it. So be generous with them. And I'll also lubricate the needle bearing at the lower part of the connecting rod from both ends. I'll give it a few gentle strokes to ensure that the oil is distributed. And also here you can get good feeling for, for the bearings and for the situation and how the, crank, uh, how the crankshaft rotates. You get good feeling of that. If there's any issue with the bearings, you can notice that the bearings are rough, for example, uh, or not moving smoothly as they should. Now, I have stated earlier, if you are reusing the, the thrust washers, if these are not brand new and you are using your old thrust washers, be careful. Always mark which washer was on what side, because if you reverse them, uh, there is a good chance that you might get an engine failure. Um, I have made another video about piston seizures and what causes piston seizures, and one of the pistons that died on me was due to this because I did not pay attention and I accidentally might have reversed the thrust washers, installed the left on the right and the right on the left. So what I did here is I marked, you can see there, there are marks on the first one and this one was on the clutch, uh, on the clutch side. So I'm going to keep this one here and the other one on the flywheel side. Now, when you come to install the piston, your piston usually has an arrow on the top. If you look, you will see an arrow. Now, that arrow always goes to the exhaust port. It's pointing at the exhaust port, and it needs to be sitting in this orientation. Now, in the opposite direction of that arrow, you will see a small pin deep inside, not sure if you can see that. I'll show you this on a brand new piston. Okay, here is a brand new piston. And here you can see the pin that I'm talking about. This pin is always pointing towards the intake. And here's the arrow, which I described earlier. This is the arrow. The arrow always points towards the exhaust port. And the, the piston should be installed in this orientation and this orientation only. So now, having the engine sitting like that, the crankcase sitting like that with the flywheel side here and the clutch side there, now I know that the intake is right here and the exhaust is right here. So the arrow should be pointing this side on the piston. Now, before putting the piston, I will lubricate the path of the rest pin. so that the rest pin will go in much easier. Now I'm not going to push the rest pin all the way through. I just need it to be catching its way. And like so. Now I'm going to keep the rest pin like that. So when I put the piston, I'm going to push it. I'm not going to install a new piston. The piston's still in good shape. It has good compression, which means that the 
um, piston ring is is also not worn out. Uh, besides, if I if I'm going to install a new piston, that means I'll have to break in the engine, and that's not a fun process. So I'm sticking to the old piston; it's still um, working fine. Now I'll have to push the rest pin all the way through. Now I have all the way through. And if necessary, I'm going to use another screwdriver to push it all the way through. Excellent. Now that the rest pin is seated in its place completely in full, there are cer clips similar to this one, which are holding the rest pin in place. One of them on every side. So there's one here on this side, and then there's one on that side in every hole. And there is a groove where the cer clip is seated. I only removed one cer clip, so the other one was sitting in there, and now I'm going to reinstall this one. Right. Now, always make sure that your cer clip is seated in its groove. If it's not properly seated, it will jump out and there is good chance that the rest pin might move out and then... And the final result will be a catastrophic failure for your engine. Now, before I move on, I'm going to lubricate the piston bearing again. One more time. Because I'm also lubricating the thrust washers, which has not been lubricated earlier. Usually the crankcase gasket comes a little bit longer than the required length. So if you see here, there is a little bit of excess that I have to remove also on the other side. So I'm going to grab a sharp knife and I'll gently remove the excess. And I'll be extremely careful because I don't want any bits going inside um, to the crankcase. And done.